There is a new Ice River Casper ASIC miner firmware that's just been dropped by R. Dugan and it adds a couple of interesting features, but we'll talk about those in a minute. I have an Ice River KS0 with an extra AC Infinity fan for cooling. And I'm using an upgraded 180 watt power supply. I've previously been using the Insider Threat Overclocks software, which is free, but the most I was able to do is use this 140 gigahertz version. If I went to any faster speeds, the errors were so great that I didn't really gain anything. What makes the R Dugan software so special is rather than specifying a speed, you get to control the overclocks directly. So you can set both the clock offset and the voltage offset. The scary bit with this firmware is this warning down here. There are currently no guardrails and no limits enforced by this software on either clocks or voltage, so use of care. That means if you overclock too high or you set your voltage offset too high, you could cook the hardware and permanently damage it. So you, this has got to be used with care. Because of that, the software adds some extra display so you can see a lot more temperatures at various parts of the system. And they also set some good zones. So they see, say anything over 80 degrees you should consider a warning so personally I'm going to try and keep my one under 80 degrees anything over 90 degrees is the danger zone which implies that you might be risking hardware damage 100 degrees Celsius that sounds like death doesn't it what they say to do is by to start increasing the clock offset so if my base clock uh, my base speed on my case here is 100 giga hash so if I wanted 150 giga hash which is 50% more I got to add 50% more to this base clock so for example my base speed speed was 875, I'd multiply that by 0.5, which means 437.5, so that would be my clock offset to increase my hash rate by 50%. And if you achieve that hash rate, great, you're finished. If you don't, because you're getting a lot of errors, then you need to start bumping the voltage offset. You've got to bump it in 6.25 millivolt increments, but it can't take that exactly. So first bump, you have to type in 7 second bump 13, then 19 and 25. Um, it also makes a note here that when you're testing, you need to leave it running for at least four hours after making a change to get a new stable result. It does go through the maths why, but don't rely on the five or 30 minute results. You have to leave it running for four hours after each change. The software does have a 1% dev fee, half which is paid to the Casper Development Fund, and then the fund has agreed to pay half of that to Dugan for developing this software. And you can see here that when it does that it actually mines for a short time to that pull there. I'm going to head over to the releases section and download this firmware now and try it out. I've reset my KS0 back to stock firmware so it doesn't have any other changes on it so it'll be a fair test. We come across to firmware upgrade and we select our new file and let it run. Eventually it comes back and says it's succeeded. We'll say okay and we'll say yes, we'll let it reboot and use the new firmware. After about two minutes, it came back and we've got the software disclaimer. I'm sure it's just gonna say, this is risky. You might break your device, things like that. All right, so we can see it looks a little bit different. We've got our extra logo here. Oh, it's showing us our clock and voltage speeds here and we've got those array of temperatures. Let's go across to minor mining settings and see if it's kept any of those settings. All right, so it's lost all of the settings. We'll put those back. I'm just gonna set my fan to 100% because I'm a little bit scared of killing my KS0, so I'll just put it on maximum cooling. This will be a part to do with overclocking. I'll say I understand and enable that, and I'll just refill this back in again with my settings. Okay, so I've put in my pool settings. I'm just using nice hash. Let's start working out offset. So the base frequency for my KS0, it says it's 780 megahertz. I want to try for 160 gigahertz, so that'll be up 60% increase, 780. Times 0.6, so I need an extra 468 megahertz of clock offset. And because when I've tried this speed on other firmware and it's gone so terribly of maybe 20% hash rate loss, I just didn't win the silicon lottery with this one. I'm going to go for an immediate 7 millivolts of voltage offset, and hopefully that will make it more stable. Now another thing it says in the notes is that all the settings do take effect immediately. There's no need to reboot, but they, they can take a little while to apply. It tends to gradually apply them. So let's see, we've requested an extra 468 megahertz. It says it adds 25 megahertz at a time slowly. So let's go and have a look at my temps. I want to make sure I'm running under 80 degrees Celsius all the time, so that's all very comfortable. All right, so that must mean it's slowly increasing the clock average. All right, I shall leave this running for quite a while and then we'll come back to it later on. One thing I've noticed is these numbers don't update real time. If you want to see them change, you have to keep clicking refresh. 
So don't expect these temperatures to just update. You will need to keep cooking refresh to make sure you're not cooking your AC. It's now been an hour and a half runtime. The temperature is staying very stable for maximum of 78, 79 degrees. And I'm seen to be settling into a fairly constant 153, 154 giga hash a second. One of the big differences though, is the rejected shear count is zero. I've never had that before. So previously when I was using the 140 giga hash firmware, I had around sort of a one and a half percent rejected shears. So in this case here, I've like maybe an extra 15 giga hash a second, but with zero errors. So every time I'm doing work, I'm getting paid for it. It's now about 24 hours later. One thing I've noticed is, although it says rejected shears, I don't believe this column works in this firmware. Up top here, it reports a 2.4% rejection rate, although I think that might still be a little high. On the pull side, it shows an average of 154 giga hash a second, so just a little bit below the 160 hours targeting and a 1.5% rejected ratio. So ignore this rejected column, I'd say it's not safe. Now while I've been watching, I've seen the chip temp get up to 79.3 degrees. I was tempted at one point to try bumping the overclock a little bit more, but the warning range is at 80 degrees. So I don't really feel like I've got any margin for error. And I'm very conscious that this firmware has no safeguards. So you can damage your hardware if you push it too far. When I measure the temperature of the ASIC, it's sitting around about 43 degrees at the moment, but I have seen it peak a bit up over 50 degrees at, at its worst. Uh, when I was running the 140 gig hash overclock on the other firmware, I have seen the same temperature, so this doesn't appear to be running any hotter. This new Ice River Casper firmware by R. Dugan, also known as PB Farmer on Discord, is awesome. I'm going to be sticking with it. I'm going to leave a video around my head that you might find interesting.